Hi guys, welcome to this session on LibreOffice Calc. In this module, I want to show you how you can create a tracker, a HR tracker, using conditional formatting and the countif function. So on the screen, I've got two people, John Smith and Dave Green. And if I just come down a little bit so you can see both of them, you can see that the information is colouring up dependent on whether they are sick, late, absent or on holiday. And the graph colours represent each of the colours at the top. The total colours are the same and the colours that conditional formatting does are also the same. So if I, for example, type L in there, he's gone late, late again, late again four late so the graph reflects that because it's looking at the totals down here and if he's on the sick it's s sick and so on and so on the graph is picking that up and same for holidays if i type h holiday absent a and then the absent goes up so that's just um three months january february march and the summary at the bottom there obviously you might want to do it for the whole year but that is the process that i want to cover Nothing too technical in this, it's fairly straightforward. So if I go into a new sheet and let's just create the, the, the days of the week. So let's go, in fact, I can just pull that across, can't I? To seven. So one to seven and then eight across. And then I'll just pause this and do the rest. So I've got the the days I'm just going to do January to start off with but obviously you do the rest as well so I want to merge and center that and put Jan Uari in there and then I want to merge and center the top bits to put the person's name in and this will be John Smith or whoever that is and then the conditional formatting needs to go into these rows so I've got my control key down which allows me once you've highlighted all the area, so this last one's only got three days, I could go all the way across, but I'll just leave it on that. Now we need to make sure we're on the Home tab, and we go to Conditions. Click on Conditions. So the first one is, let's say, if they're absent, I want, um, that needs to be in quotes. Let's get that in quotes. So it's a text string, so let's just open quotes, A, close quotes. And then you've got a series of options here. You can create a new style if you want, but I think it's, um, so if it's absent, I want that to be black. So I think that's style three with white text, that's good. And then add, so this second one, if he's sick. So again, in quotes, I want that to be red. So I think that was one. Yep, and then add, this one is going to be late. And I want this to be, blue or bluish color so i've got to find a blue color um not sure which one the blue one is that one four and then the last one is holes so h and that one can be a mustard color which i just saw there that's it so I'll click ok to that and then we have to test this this works this area works if i put a that should go black. It did go black, but I haven't got the font going white, which is my mistake. Now, if I go S for sick, that's okay. And if I go L for late, that's okay. And H for holes, that's okay. Now, on the outside, I want to put a little dividing line here I need to put some labels at the top there and color them in so if we go absent and then sick then late and then holes and then you can just color the color code those in the same as what you've got here so absent wants to be background black font white sick wants to be background red that color red late is going to be blue i mean you don't have to do this but 
and then holes is going to be mustard whatever color that is and then along this line where it's got one two three four five six seven i need some labels so if i go a now it's put the whole word in there but i don't want the whole word i just want a and then just backspace that off so it is just an a and then i want s backspace that off and then l backspace that one off and then h h backspace that off now we're ready to do the count if function so counting along how many times these letters are repeated so the formula is equals count if open the bracket and then select the range that you want to look at in this case this range here now that needs to be dollar sign this needs to be f4 or dollar sign it which means it's going to be locked because i'm going to pull that across in a second then i do a comma and now i could type the letter a but I, I if i put a cell reference in there it will automatically come across when i pull this formula over so i'll just leave it like that close the bracket tick it says one pull it over and it says one for each and just test that with type another l or something so it picks that up as two so we know that's working and this is not case sensitive you can see that capital l lowercase so now this needs to be copied and just dropped on each line so i'll just drop it there Control v on that one so we've got the labels on each line and then we do the same formula on each line so this one i'll just type it again equals count if open bracket select the range the range is this week to the 14th f4 lock it comma and then click on the first cell and then tick and pull it across now you should always test it so i'll just put an a in one of these yeah counted a next one you do the same equals count if open the bracket select the range select the range f4 to lock it comma click on the cell that you want to look at or count and then pull it over this time check it with a different cell h if you're not sure you can check them all this one equals count if open the bracket select the range comma and click on the cell reference tick and then pull that across and then last one is just these three so equals count if open the bracket select the the range these three f4 comma and then click on the cell so that's basically the same for everything and you're just pulling these across and then didn't test that one so we'll do a late and we'll do a late there and we can see that it's picking them up so late okay it didn't pick that up there so let's have a quick check okay so i thought i'd dollar sign that but obviously not that's why it's not picked it up so i need to f4 that that's why you test things tick and pull that across then it picks it up so when i pull that across without the dollar signs that moved from column b to to h to c to i and i don't want it to do that obviously now at the bottom if i just copy this one more time copy and paste what i need is the totals so in there i need to add up all the times this person was absent so that's just the sum function so we're just going to click on sum and then then highlight the numbers click the tick so two times absent and then you just pull that across for the others now if you want to put borders on this and shade it it's up to you um, if i highlight this block in fact the whole lot and just put borders on all all borders and then let's color into a color that is not used in the conditional formatting for john smith and if you want these could have been colored up uh well, let's color the the actual days a different color so they stand out a little bit and then you can do that across there as well 
all the way down so the actual numbers and the titles are grey and it's just basically making it easier to see if it isn't easier to see obviously don't do it or you can use some of the pre-formatted things but um, I like to do things like this myself just bring that across and then next thing we have to do is just make a little chart based on this, these these categories and these totals at the bottom so you can either just highlight these two or you can use the words itself so I'll just do these bottom two for that oops, for now so I've got them highlighted and I just want a little column chart so uh, insert chart that'll do that's actually looking okay straight away um, but you can go through this and pick a different style if you want different type of graph these one this is the one that I should have could have a 3d one um, data range is, is what I've already got selected if you click on this just has a look at different looks a different way um, I don't want it like that I want it like that so I'll just wait for it okay and then data series can stay the same chart elements title um, this is John Smith so I'll put John Smith in there I'm not bothered about the rest of that and then just finish and then you can get rid of anything that you don't want and you can color in any of these if I double click on that it gives me the option of coloring this in so what was this this was absent so that wants to be black okay and then sick is red so double click on that and then go red just you don't have to do this but it's just making it look late was blue it's a funny color blue that um it's more of a turquoise but that'll do and then the last one is a mustard color which is that one okay and then if you wanted to you can move that up to where, it, where you want it to be and then make it smaller if it's too big and then do whatever you want to do with the graph but basically we've now got this set up for one single person uh, if you want to block that off you can do as well just to make it distinct from the others so we've got one person and one month if you've got a lot of stuff you probably want to use a different package altogether than this maybe a database package but if you've only got a few you can do the whole year coming down for one person and then the next person you could have on a different sheet or if you've got them say 10 people you could just put them all on one sheet going down 12 months as long as it's easy to look at that's what I'd just say to you as long as you can see it and it makes sense to you that's great but that's all I want to do on this little session so hopefully it's been of use for you thank you for your time and I'll see you on the next one